And this is why it's very important to understand in the pursuit of deeper self-knowledge is that we begin to understand that we are not one being, one personality, but rather we are an aggregate of mythic and archetypal energy. And that certain energies have a stronger hold within us than others. But we are truly creating in our unique experience and in our unique expression different aggregates of these archetypal energies. And so as we understand that the keys of consciousness tell us about the innate structure of who and what we are, and it reveals the theater of the psyche, that we are composed, as I say, not of one voice, but of many voices. And this is why, you know, people in a lot of times in a psychological model try and, you know, uh, they try and uh, figure themselves out rather than realizing that, no, human consciousness is a vehicle. We need to explore these things, not figure them out. You don't figure out love. You create the conditions where you are capable of being moved upon by love, and when this occurs, you are transformed by your willingness to be a place where it could dwell as even a possibility within you. And this is something that I think we have to move, again, in this Aquarian development of consciousness, away from belief. The tarot is not... Uh, a, a belief system. It is a tool. And people have branded it wicked and evil and unchristian and all of these different things very unfairly and really out of ignorance rather than out of knowledge. Because an image asks you to believe nothing. An image says, I am a Rorschach test. I bring to you your own character. Therefore, in this image, if you see evil, I am simply reflecting back to you part of your own character. And for you to see past that, you must deal with your assumptions about what evil is. You must move beyond the limitations of living in a garden that you've grown based on assumption rather than a garden you've grown based upon the seeds of possibility. Because the seeds of assumptions are the gardens of fear. And the gardens of fear don't want new growth. They want the same crop over and over and over again. But the gardens of wonder, the gardens of possibility say, Ah, these new seeds, every time they come together, they hybrid. And every time they come together, we have a different composite, a different sense of what it means to be human. And this is where we start to understand the symphonic qualities of consciousness. And this is what the keys of the tarot are saying. You can study E and F and G and A, A minor, B flat, C sharp, <coughs> and you can study the notes till the cows come home. And you can memorize the notes. But the purpose is not the note. The purpose is the music that the note will allow you to play. And this is extremely important to remember because when we understand that this is a device, a technology, not a belief, not a religion, but rather it's the tool that allows us mythic ingress. It allows us to understand that we've been burdened by normal psychology. Oh, I'm just a normal person. Really, what that can be is, I'm just afraid of everything that <laughs> allows me to actually assume that I might be interesting. I might <laughs> actually be mythic. I might actually have things in my life that if I look at as dragons, I realize it's just not a feudal battle, but actually a transformative battle. Now, that really isn't true or false. That's a different proposition of consciousness. And that, to me, is the great enthusiasm that working in this way did for me. Because when I was starting out, it was actually it was a, it was a friend of mine who wanted to use some of my, my images as, as archetypal or tarot illustrations. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll draw some because I, I, you know, I, I've always been interested in, and yet found the, uh, the images rather puerile. And, and um, for the most part, not all of them, but you know, they, they, I thought it could be so much more. And I did say, how hard could that be? And, and that, that's, <laughs> that I have to say, the Greeks, all of what they talked about, hubris, you know, over cockiness, it's true. <laughs> Always watch yourself. I, I actually feel that, that I, I'm, I'm the outcome of, had I known what I was getting into, I needed dark matter <clears throat> just from the ideas alone and the willingness to engage them energetically and sketch and draw. They start to emerge, and as they do, they start to grow, and as they start to grow, they really do become mentors, and they start to transform, for me, and this is what's exciting, they transform the purpose and nature of art. They turned art away from art for me into tools for inquiring into consciousness.
and into our ancient depths, into our mythic storybook. And if we begin as a species of consciousness to start looking at ourselves as the inheritors like great trees of a root system that nourishes us, not because they did it right or better, or that time was the time I really wish I was living in, but actually understood that we, like great trees with great roots, are drawing up these nourishing archetypal and imaginative energies continuously into ourselves. Now, if we don't have a frame of reference, if we don't have a context, this is why Campbell and Carl Jung were so important, because Joseph Campbell tries to contextualize the human psyche in terms of its mythic implication. He's saying, you see, over the ages, there is the reoccurrence of these qualities of consciousness. They take on different roles, they call themselves by different names, they have different gods, different goddesses, but if you look more deeply, as all good syncretists do, it reveals that truly there are patterns within consciousness. And if we study those patterns, and then we begin to appreciate that we are composed of those patterns, we realize it's not about learning what we don't know, but as the ancient Greeks and many of the inner traditions would reveal, it's about creating the tools that allow us to trigger our ancient knowing. And I like to say that our ancient knowing is not data that rises into the computer bank and like, oh yes, well now I speak uh, uh, Sanskrit and I, I'm now a you know, master of Hebrew. It's nothing like that because what we've mistaken is the outer form, the scintillating crust, as it were, of, of things. And so we think, oh, it's the Kabbalah, or oh, it's the runes, or oh, it's the I Ching, or oh, it's the Tarot. And I have to say from the other side of that, no, not at all. Those are the outward trappings. Those are simply the energetic embodiments of these deep and great energies. And they don't wait as things to control us or this. They literally wait as imaginative tools. And for some it'll be the I Ching. For some it will be the runes. For some it'll be the tarot. All of these systems, sort of like a bassoon and a guitar, certain musicians go, I've got to play that bassoon. I've got to do the runes. Then somebody say, I oh, know the guitar. Ah, the guitar. I love the guitar. I need the tarot. In other words, we're looking for sympathy in terms of our own personal wiring as to what system we are attracted to. But the system itself is not a matter of belief. The system is more of an instrument for a musician saying, if these tones, if these qualities move upon you, then be assured that you engaging them will be transformed because you will take a journey. There's a curiosity on both sides. Because you have to say, certain traditions and certain symbols, I realize they're just not as interested in me. And so I walk by and I just don't have the strong gumption to pick it up and learn about it. Other traditions, other symbols, they seem to jump off the wall and run over and go, oh, I've got, you know, come on, we've got to talk about this. <laughs> and so for me, this is what I found with the, the tarot and with this wheel. And why I had brought up the, the mandala and the DNA and the wheel and tried to uh, introduce this is that I want to talk about consciousness as Ezekiel once did. Ah, I looked up into the heavens and I saw wheels within wheels. And we said, well, what does that mean? And what he's talking about is that the wheels within wheels, or as in, in esotericism they talk about the ring past knot, about basically what you think of as gravitational fields or fields of uh, mental gra um, uh, that we are held within a particular thought form or a particular area based upon the questions we're asking. So as I like to point out, when we ask questions about the function, the mythic implication of consciousness, we have the outer wheel of the tarot. And when we say, ah, but what is the purpose of consciousness, that's when, you see, we step into the blossom and we understand, ah, my function is to blossom. And this is what's bringing up the Aquarian transformation because we have gone from stage to stage to stage.